Um, good morning, Steve, and welcome on board. And you're asking us any elephant come up and try to make contact with you. I thought we were pretty close then. I thought uh, <laughs> one of those boys was going to put his trunk right out and smell the camera at that stage. But, um, as yet, I haven't had one sort of try and, and make contact with me personally. Um, we had, about a week ago, we had the elephants actually touching jigger and sniffing with the trunk and sniffing the jack and everything on the front of the, of the jigger. Um, so they do get close and they do test the boundaries as well. They do check it out and as I say, I think that's what those two boys were doing was just seeing, you know, smelling us and seeing what we were about and as I say, just being like a teenager and seeing how far they could push their boundary with us as well. But uh, again, you know, elephants, are they can be such calm creatures and so placid and they've walked, you know, right down the side of the vehicle. And then you have on the other extreme where they can come charging at the vehicle. And again, you don't always know the circumstances. And we had uh, quite a large female charge the vehicle the other day. And we think that there was a predator in the area that had sort of upset them to begin with because they the whole herd was a little bit uneasy and uh, unfortunately she just decided that she was going to tell us that she wasn't happy and she did charge but she stopped the charge and uh, as I say the situation changes all the time and that's why <laughs> hello I think we must have some funny smell this morning here Patrick yeah, well, I'm sure I did, but maybe I put the wrong pair on. Maybe they're saying, you're not Mark, you smell differently. As I say, they can be such gentle creatures. But if, if a person walks through here now, you'd see a very different herd. And they have done uh, research on it. <clears throat> and they even have gone as far as putting a microphone, microphone underground and playing recording. Uh, I think it was up in Atosha, if I remember rightly, and they recorded the sound when there was a predator in the area and all the elephants. Uh, it was quite a blood-curdling cry, and all the elephants grouped together and then ran off again. Uh, once they grouped together, and they were very, very upset and very uneasy. And a few years later, they put this microphone and played the sound underground like so looking into obviously the vibrations in the ground and what they found was that uh, they had the same reaction so they do seem to be able to communicate through the ground and uh, some people even suggest that they could be heard maybe or felt kilometers away and obviously if males are trying to find a female breeding herd then uh, they might have to use both the sound and the and the vibration. It's quite interesting how far it could actually travel and they were saying at least a couple of Ks, if not more. So let's say the main key in the bush is respect. Respect the bush, respect the animals, and it will respect you back. If you get to the stage where you take everything for granted then you're going to end up with a problem <laughs> hey I think do we have any more questions Kath? If anybody does want to send any more questions in, you just need to email Catherine in Fire Control. Uh, she's with me this morning on Game Drive, and uh, she'll be able to radio through any questions. So you just need to email firecontrol at safari.tv. And I think someone else has gone to try and follow up on the leopard. So if we do happen to find, if they do happen to find the leopard, I'll see if we can 
uh, go to that side, but I think we haven't really seen the elephants too much towards the end of the week, so we're going to stick with them for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We've just got another game viewer behind us. All right, little one. All right. So sometimes they get so intent on what they're doing, changing the sound. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> this had uh, Annette bypassing us. Some of you may know her. I think uh, she may have been on one or two fireside chats in the past from Bush Lodge. She's one of the managers there. I have another question coming through. Okay, another question from Liz. Uh, do elephants lie down on their sides? Well, they certainly do lie down, and I have seen them on their sides. Um, they can spend six hours sleeping, apparently. And uh, we ha I do remember driving around Madikwe, and it was quite a hot day. And we drove, came around the corner, and there was a huge bull elephant sleeping quite quite deeply underneath the maru tree. And he didn't realize we were there until we'd been there after about a couple of minutes. And then he suddenly woke up. But he was sort of not quite on his side, but he wasn't quite sort of front up. And uh, did actually look like he was using the tree for a bit of support as well. So they probably will change their position, but uh, I have seen them on their side before. Uh, not too, which one are you on, Patrick? This guy in the middle of the tree. Okay. The you can see the, the little one just opposite us, and uh, rolling the branch in his mouth. And using those teeth just to strip off the bark. And almost, say, taking the, the branch and using it as almost like a chew. And turning it in his mouth to make sure the bark comes off. And eating quite a nutritional tree there, one of the acacia trees. But obviously the thorns are going to be a bit of a problem, but you can see it's taking the the tree with the th part of the thorns on it and just eating it very, very slowly. I don't blame you. <laughs> the oh yeah, you can hear the... You can hear the buffalo. <coughs> I wonder if they're going to be moving. Tree house down. Oh, yeah. I think they may have been a tree house down. You can just hear some buffalo through the bush, just to our left. Uh. They might be moving up Shabam Road. Goes starting to produce maybe about 80 kilos of dung for the day. Obviously, they won't release it all in one go, but uh, throughout the day. And that's obviously why elephants have had to grow so big, because they need to eat quite a lot. Because they do eat very low nutritional.
parts of the plant, like the bark. So they need to eat a lot more to be able to compensate for that fact. So they'll, for a large elephant, especially like one of the larger elephants at the back there, maybe about 150 kilos of food a day. Maybe for a big bull, you might be looking at a little bit more than that. But they only utilize about 40% of it. So as I say, you're looking for about 100 kilos of dung a day. Obviously, depending on the size of the animal. You see them using the tusk there to pull down the tree, locking the tusk around the branch and just breaking the branch. And it's amazing that the strength of those trunks is really incredible. And yet they can be so careful and just pick you know, a single leaf or a single blade of grass. And they can be very tender when obviously maneuvering the young. And for a few years, the female won't let the young out of her sight. If it goes too far, she'll move, move the baby back towards her with a trunk. It'll be very, very tender. Well, I hope you're going to finish that little one. I'm half tempted to go and see if we can find the buffalo, but it just sounds like they're they're just in this bush here, so I don't know if we're going to have any success at the moment. If they're right in the thick bush there. It's so nice just spending a bit of time with the elephants. We haven't really had a chance to spend much time with them in the morning. And again, it's such a relaxed herd as well. And when the boys get to roughly around 16, 18 years old, they do start to get a bit too boisterous. Obviously, the hormones are going to start kicking in, and uh, eventually they will start being pushed out of the herd. So obviously, with the young babies around, Busy there watching me reverse and she's moving. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the elephant herd crossing the road here. Here, Mike Cross, we got one coming through. A grave tower. Now, the more skills the animal has to learn, the longer they generally stay with the parents. It obviously makes a lot of sense. And with the females, they tend to stay with with the mothers for the rest of their life. But as I say, the young males will move on about 16 or 18. Obviously, there is a lot to learn. And uh, what you'll often find, especially with the, the young, young calves, 
As, as the mother is eating, the baby will put its trunk in the mouth to try and taste what it is that the mother's eating. And obviously they'll be able to learn what's good, what's not good. And they'll also learn where to find the food and where to find water. And the elephants will also dig in the ground for water if there's no fresh water available. So they will actually know holes or spots and they'll be passed down through generation to generation. And obviously over the changing of the seasons and over the couple of decades, especially for the males, and all that will serve them later on in life. Same with your predators. The, the young will play, reenact, obviously stalking and trying to kill, pouncing on each other. And again, skills they're going to need later on in life. Look at the monkeys. Again, they may have quite a a wide variety of, of ways to communicate, so they need to learn all of this, obviously what to eat, where to find it again. Obviously something like a hare, there's not too much uh, to learn to be a hare, so there's not really <coughs> There's not any benefit to uh, to stay with the parents too long. Okay, I'm just getting an update from the buffalo. Okay, they are still in the block. Stations the Schlamivan Glava slowly mobile west across Weaver's Nest towards Philemon's cut line into the Schlatine. Uh, the Schlambiev and Glove are fambering west across Weaver's Nest Road towards the Schlatine and Philemon's Cut Line. Thank you. And here comes the rest of the herd. Made up of small family groups. Um, so you have the different units within the herd. And what's quite interesting is that the matriarch is sort of chosen. She doesn't, she's not really asserting her authority. The, the others kind of respect her to be the leader. And quite often if the matriarch dies uh, in a herd, um, the herd's kind of lost and they start to try and sort of elect a new leader and sometimes there may be a few disputes and the herd starts to fragment. Looks like this is one of the uh, units of the herd that we saw walking across the road just now. And I think uh, they're going to continue to the bush. Let's see if we can maybe catch up with the buffalo. Quite nice to see how big a herd it actually is. Any questions, feel free to email them in at filecontrol at safari.tv with Kath in file control radioing them through to me and Patrick helping me on camera today. And a beautiful shot of this 
fairly old calf having a drink while Mother eats from the bushes. Looks like she's going for a russet bush willow this time. Again, quite different from other mammals, having the mammary glands up by the front legs instead of the back legs. Stations uh, still have Vizsla, the Schlamiv and Glove, Junction, Chelapan Road and Weaver's Nest. One station in the lock, one on the bridge. lady. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we're going to leave them to it and see if we can catch up with the buffalo. It'll be quite nice to see how big the herd is and we'll have another drive around where we lost the leopard. You never know, we might be lucky. We've got about an hour's left of drive this morning. remember this is live so we're just sitting with these elephants and now we're going to see if we can catch up with the big flag and we haven't seen a big herd for quite a while now it's quite nice to see if we can catch up with them yeah he's hoping hey if anybody would like to watch the third leg of the Rangers race, it's Jared's turn this afternoon. And he's going to try and spot as many mammals in the three hours. And you guys have to email in what animal it is. So we don't tell you, you have to tell us. And the bar has been set. So Patrick's just fallen short with 13. Uh, Mark is on 15, I believe. Sorry? 10. 10? Aha! And Patrick's saying 10. <laughs> definitely. Definitely ahead. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> 10. Hmm? No, it's not 10. <laughs> yeah, it's 15. Mark is 15. Somebody told me. <laughs> they were lying. Uh -uh. <laughs> Shame. Patrick thought he was in front. Someone told him ten. <laughs> so it's quite a good giggle. I must admit, I really enjoyed uh, being on camera with Mark. We managed to see a scrub hair out in daylight, which was very unusual. And even a bush baby. Uh, yeah, we had a bush baby. Galego. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did find it. Station with the Inyati on Shambam Road. Shambam Road, sorry.
I'm saying the coalition is possibly the 20. And again, that's what we thought uh, to begin with. But apparently the 20 coalition is made up of older males, older than the ones that we saw. Um, and as I say, when I've been asking all the guides in the area, they've, they've kind of been saying, no, it's not the 20 part. So I don't know if wires are getting crossed. Because um, as someone also said, maybe they're the central, what's called the central part uh, from Kruger. Um, but they're definitely from from Kruger. That's that much all the guides could tell me, and that's what they've all been saying or confirming on. Uh, that they are definitely from Kruger. Uh, but as I say, when I asked, I think it was Greg about the Swenny Prize, you know, they, they're much older. I haven't been able to find much on the 20 Pride, the coalition. And if we've got pictures, that'll be really good. So uh, I do have a picture of the one. And uh, when we were, I think it was Pauline I was talking to via email. And she was saying she's in contact with the guys down at Mala Mala. And they were saying that there's the one with the bold patch on his nose, which I've got a picture on of, of my on my Facebook page. Um, or the Ning page, you can go onto either and it's on there. Um, so with the ball patch on the nose, it's fairly recognisable. And there's been the coalition down there in Marla Marla. But as I say, as yet, uh, we're still waiting for a name. It could be the Central Coalition. Um, but every guy that I've been talking to up here doesn't seem to know. Um, so as I say, I'm still waiting for confirmation. I'm just trying to find out if there is space for us with the buffalo. So they were, they were around here, we could hear them a little bit further down towards the dam. Couldn't quite hear who the other person was with them. station with the Nyari Hotel. Good morning, sir. Are there, is there space for me? You're breaking up. Uh, do you see a lost signal? I'm going to see if I can maybe return.
And uh, instead of Mr. Hello everyone, Catherine in Final Control here. We're just going through a slightly bad signal patch area and um, hopefully we won't be too long. Tar is making our way out of it and um, we'll be back on track. Thank you.
welcome back everybody and uh, unfortunately it looks like the buffalo are a little bit too far south so uh, sound like they move through this block because we definitely heard them opposite the elephants and I thought someone said earlier they were on the southern side so I don't know if they came into the block and turned around and went back again or whether they've split up for some reason and I'm not too sure exactly what's going on there but uh, I say when I just uh, when I just called I think you guys are still with us at that point they said no south of Treehouse Dam and we've certainly just found the tracks but unfortunately we had a bit of signal break up there so we're back in this area where we lost the leopard we'll see if we can maybe catch up with the leopard if your fingers crossed <laughs> Think happy thoughts, think leopard. Maybe we can channel all of that thought. We might be able to find them. It certainly has been quite a wonderful morning with the elephants so far. So actually having them reaching out maybe half a meter away with their trunks and smelling us. So they must be Funny smell they've not smelled before. I thought it was, as I say, they're just saying, You're not Mark, who are you? <laughs> I think let's try Rebecca's Road again. I haven't heard anything from the vehicle who was also looking around this area. I gave him uh, an update while we were at the elephants. Sound like he was going to try and follow up. So we haven't heard anything yet. doing very well. Oh, I'm just going to answer the radio quickly. There we go. Okay, thank you, thank you. I did find it. I could find the in blog. Okay, it's fine, I find it. Can't help you that. I was hoping that was the call about finding the leopard, but it was just a... Uh, the warmth from the sun. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I say I hope you guys are feeling the warmth from the sun now. It's beautiful here. Such a lovely, lovely temperature. So I'm trying to channel it to you guys, especially up in the cold areas. But um, Diane, you just like to know what my background is. And uh, those of you who don't know, I'm actually from the UK originally, in South Africa for just over four years now. And I've always been interested in animals as far back as I can remember. And 
uh, one of my very first uh, memories is trying to draw a kangaroo and saying I wanted to go to see the kangaroos. But uh, as I grow up, I've just always been interested in animal behaviour, watching documentaries, and that's what sort of pushed me into uh, sort of the zoology class. So I did zoology at the university and I worked at a zoo in the UK for just over eight years. Uh, two years full time, the rest part time while I was studying. And gained a lot of insight and knowledge. Last station, can you repeat? That's a negative. I lost visual uh, quite a long time ago, covering in the southeastern direction from the old Hyena Kaya. I'm just in the area trying to relocate again on Rebecca's Road. And uh, yeah, as I say, I came out to South Africa to do the ranger course and I did six months training and then six months work experience in one of the lodges and I always thought I was going to go back home. I've always wanted to live the experience instead of just come out and visit it. So I actually wanted to experience it, uh, the ups and downs of living in the bush. and. I just found being out here, I absolutely loved it. And tried to organise myself a work visa, uh, which I did, um, with my zoology background as well and my Fugasa levels, which is the Field Guides Association of South Africa. And you just get graded on the different different levels. And I just worked my way up the levels. And as I say, I've been guiding just over three and a half years now still learning and that's what I love about it you can never know everything in the bush and moving around areas let's say the Sabi Sands is very well known for obviously its leopard activity and just in the two months that I've been with Safari TV I have learned so much about le leopards um, that I, I didn't know previously because we didn't get to see them too often and again having large elephant herds large buffalo herds and interactions we've never been used to. It's been absolutely awesome. I'm just wondering whether it's worth us going further down, eh? Hey? Yeah. Oh, we should, just in case. This is where we lost the leopard first thing this morning. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, we're just driving along here and then Patrick just heard some barking quite a few meters into the bush. You could see the kudu that were barking and they were looking back over the shoulder into this area. And we had visual, very, very quick visual of uh, one of the leopards. And unfortunately, we were slowed down. There was a bit of a ditch. And uh, even trying to angle my wheels to try and go through it, we were catching the back so it's just a little bit too too steep an incline on either side so we weren't able to, to try and get through it quickly and we came out and went around and tried to, to follow up on the other side and unfortunately uh, it obviously disappeared it's starting to get quite thick bush in there so it's quite difficult to try and navigate our way in, in through there without causing too much damage trying to have a look around. You never know. He may have given up and walked towards one of the roads and maybe sit down in the road or maybe in the tree. That's why I'm just wanting to have another look in this area. Let's have a quick look down here again. So 
with all the barking going on. Apparently he did try and chase one of the, the kudu, but I don't think it would have been very successful. And now everything in the area will know there's a leopard here. So the chance of them being successful is very, very slim. So we've had a quite a nice morning with the elephants, getting very close to us and showing how relaxed elephants can be close to the vehicle, having the young boys starting to try and practice asserting their authority and spreading their ears. As I say, if, if they really meant business, we would have seen a lot more from them. They were, they were just practicing seeing what our reaction would be to them. and basically being teenage boys testing the boundaries. So we're just coming back to the old hyena den. So this is one of the old ones in the air. I think this one was used around eight months ago or something. Very much abandoned now. Very, very little activity. Nothing really on the road. It might be worth Jared coming past here, see so if he can get a leopard on his. Ranger race this afternoon. Again, any questions you'd like to ask, email them through to file control at safari.tv. Be able to answer them live as we're driving around here in this beautiful part of the African bush Juma Game Reserve. Looking for the leopard at the moment. Let's see if there's anything else around. We did go up towards Impala Plains, see if the cheetahs made her way back. And also to look out for any wild dog. That'll be an absolute awesome thing to see. So I'm really, really hoping we get a chance to see wild dog. They are uh, towards the western side, towards Zimbabwe apparently. And it sounds like they have some pups. So they won't be moving too far away from the den. But maybe as the pups get older, we may see them coming towards this way. Fingers crossed. I'd love to see that. Actually, I think we'll take Zoe's road up there. I also found some leopard tracks. Um, going north on Zoe's Road, so I'm going to have a quick check up towards Gallego, shortcut up towards Buffalo Swift Cook Line. I will still have a bit of time. look out for the water buck in this area. We've had a beautiful big male water buck around recently. Why not to see him? Funny enough, you don't see the females too often. You see them, but just not too often. But 
water, especially going down towards Gary Dam. It's quite nice to have them around during the day. You can see them fairly often down there. We've seen quite interesting mating behaviour from the waterbug male. I actually forgot to to look to find a branch or something that the elephants have eaten so I could maybe show you how to make rope. I particularly want to uh, I'll keep looking out for a suitable tree. Silver cluster leaves are quite good and it's got to be fairly weak. Managed to show you on this drive. Let's only try on the following drives. There hasn't been any recent elephant activity around here, but let's see if I can show you on this drive. what I think we're having People who are just joining us, just joined us before, uh, or just after I started the drive this morning, I'm hoping that you may have recognized the difference between not using the old vehicle and actually using the vehicle. And uh, for me, driving it, it definitely feels a lot smoother than the old Jigger. definitely noticed the difference this morning and yesterday morning we did our very first drive it's not the buzzing that you usually hear uh, when you're sitting and watching the animals it's much much more quieter with all the new equipment quite, quite nice ah. ah it's a kudu I thought it was the water bug through there are you able to see the I think it might be a little bit too far into the bush. Yeah, let's see if we can have a... Can you see? Yeah, have a quick look. So, just having a quick look at the kudu. 
For those of you who may have joined us a little bit later, we saw Kudu earlier on in the day. And this group has quite a young male with them, about 18 months old. It still looks like this leopard may have decided to stay in that block. There's nothing, no tracks coming out. So it may be in the block for the rest of the day. But I was hoping we might just hit it lucky again. We've got about 20 minutes left of drive, so as I say, we're going to slowly make our way up towards Gallego Shortcut and just see what we can find up there. And there were some Lino tracks, they looked fairly old, but they were generally moving in the same direction towards Zoe's Road. Um, it could be that they bypassed the area and went up towards Lego as well, I know they do like that area, so we'll just have a quick drive up there and see around there, and see what else has made its way out onto quarantine area. We've got a few wisps of serious clouds up in the sky this morning, so it does mean there's another warm front coming in, so quite unsettled weather. So again, we might just get the odd one or two raindrops again. Termite mound, sleeping in the tree, and just moving through the bush. Yeah, it could be on the ground. Shane, there's no hyenas to follow this morning. I tend to be able to smell out a leopard. I think it's it's very true. Animals do pick up on if you're scared, or if you're relaxed, or if you you know you respect them. They do pick up on all of that, and you know you can even see it with cats or dogs at home. If you have someone that's quite scared of the animals, uh, you can see the animals go to them and sort of taunt them a little bit. And, uh, they sort of they do pick up on on fear. So if ever you are in a situation with an animal, it's, it's obviously it's, it's very difficult if you are afraid, but you've got to try and keep yourself calm and relaxed so that the animal senses that and it actually makes them less threatening. And they also feel less threatened. Because obviously when you're when you've got emotions and the fear and everything, it definitely unsettles animals too and uh, I definitely learned that from the animals at the zoo especially and uh, you can also build up quite a an amazing relationship with animals you would never have expected and when working at the zoo I definitely learned a lot about white rhino and uh, something that uh, I, I always thought that hey, it's nice, it's a big animal, but I'd rather look at the cats. And it wasn't until I actually came out to South Africa and, as I say, spent a lot, a lot of time with wild rhino um, and also being at the zoo and spending a lot of time with the captive white rhino did I really come to understand these animals. Um, and so much so, there was one particular male who... He, he didn't get on too well with everybody. He had sort of certain keepers that he liked. 
and so many people who didn't like him. It was obviously very difficult to work with him if he didn't like you. You can't really uh, put a, a, you know, a lead around the rhino and sort of ask him to do what, what you wanted to do. It doesn't really work like that. Um, and they're very, very responsive. And there was one particular day where they, they like routine, and that's one thing that definitely is very similar to animals in captivity and to animals out in the wild. They have their routine, they have their particular pathways, they have the particular times they like to do things. And if that routine is upset for whatever reason, they, they get very jittery and very upset by it. And there was one day they were building an extra part to the rhino house, and the rhinos have been out in the field all day, messing around, wallowing in the, bu- in the mud, eating, and uh, just enjoying life. And when it came to them coming back in, uh, they got to the threshold of the gate and went, this is not right, this smells differently. I don't like the smell of this or the look of it. I may just lose you through the dip here. Do. So I said, look, I'll come around and give you a hand. Get behind the back. Is that better? Okay. Um, yeah, so they were just saying, um, I was just saying to her, you can try the food, you can try this, if you try coaxing them. Um, tried all of that so I came round and I just started calling them and I saw that the big male who I had a very good relationship with was starting to respond to me so I carried on calling and I started moving towards the rhino house and I was absolutely amazed that this rhino was continuing to follow me and he was coming in very very wary his front foot and his he was taking very very fine fairy steps from the rhino and he was coming in but he was following me and he was trusting me enough to get him through this uh, zone where he wasn't too sure. And the other male came in with his rump touching his, and he came in backwards. And he also, he was kind of looking around and looking over his shoulder and you know, sort of what's going on. Um, but he had the comfort from the other rhino uh, to sort of lead him in. And it was it was quite amazing. Both of us, once, once the rhinos got to the a uh, bit that they re- uh, recognised, both of them came in immediately and they sort of went into their, their quarters and it was, uh, it really was just an incredible experience and I never really understood how much, uh, you know, even just that sort of relationship uh, can help and even with the rhinos and the wild, um, that I have seen them sort of respond, they do start to recognise vehicles, they do start to recognise people uh, from the sound, obviously they've got very poor eyesight, um, but also from the smell as well, and uh, again just going back to the question that I had earlier about obviously animals charging vehicles and all that sort of thing, and predators especially, I actually had one of the rhinos come right up to the vehicle. And uh, this particular vehicle, the particular person had, had sort of driven too close to the animals and made them upset. So when I drove this vehicle, I saw a reaction. And uh, she stopped and looked up, and I thought, yeah, that's a bit weird for this rhino. She was one that I saw fairly often in the wild. And uh, she started walking towards the vehicle, and she wasn't being aggressive, she was just walking quite slowly towards the vehicle. And she had a small calf in tow with her. And she then... Are you wanting to go that way? Um, I think let's go and see the zebra again. Um, I just want to go up past and then up towards Gallego. Um, but yeah, as I say, 
she walked right up to me and her head was less than what the, the elephant was today for sure her head was right next to me and we didn't have a door like we don't have on Jigger in the new vehicle and it's almost as if she was trying to put the two together she's okay this vehicle I don't like but the smell I recognize and she was, she, it was almost as if she came up for a closer inspection to see if what her senses were telling her was true and it really was incredible and it was almost as if it's like right okay I know who you are now turned around and walked off and as I say definitely the, they do recognize and if you speak you know the ears go and they will listen to you obviously they won't understand what you're saying but they obviously understand the tone of your voice and everything let's have a quick look at this over in here have a quick scan of the area at the back there I still want to try and make it up towards Gallego if I can so again with the common or the plain zebra and hopefully you can see those shadow stripes that I was talking about earlier now they're a little bit closer and that's what sets them apart from the virtuals up in other parts of Africa. They so say they used to be called virtual zebra down here, but they're no longer called virtuals in this part of Africa. They're known as the plains or common zebra. Okay, I'm still having a nice shot. <laughs> yeah, Italian. <laughs> and the male impala, something's started them off, they're all running. Probably not, it doesn't look like from a priority, you can see there's actually one male chasing. Looks like it is another young male. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm just setting the rest of the other males off in the area. But we are coming out of the breeding season, so this this behaviour is going to become less and less as we continue on. This year it peaked around April. So we should be starting to see newborn impala around mid-November towards December this year. Seven seven month gestation period. Look at the wildebeest, otherwise known as GNU. And what's really nice is you can actually see the colour of the GNU. Hence why they get the name Blue Wildebeest or Brindle GNU. And the Black Wildebeest is the other type of wildebeest we have here in South Africa. But they're much, much darker in colour. And you won't find them here. They, they need a pure grassland. Obviously, the species of grass there will be more suitable for them to eat. And here we have the savanna grassland, which is more suited to the, the blue wildebeest. And the ones that go on the mass migration uh, up in Kenya, Tanzania, are also a form of blue wildebeest or a subspecies of uh, blue wildebeest, the white-bearded wildebeest. <coughs> I think if I can remember rightly, there's about seven species of wildebeest, or subspecies of wildebeest, should I say. Very, very peaceful here this morning. 
<coughs> I do wonder if that, that leopard's going to make its way over here. So there's plenty of food around. You never know. Especially if you didn't manage to catch anything. Plenty of the Impala. Still no baboons though. Um, don't know if you guys saw, Graham was one of the vehicles that joined us with the elephants. I think he might not have done, he was, he was behind us for most of it. Uh, he's been saying that the baboons haven't been here for two or three days now. So we'll eagerly await their arrival again and see what's been happening with them. It's going to be quite a hot day today, I think. It's a very, very nice temperature. Uh, for those of you who are living in the colder areas, I hope you're all wrapped up nice and warm with your blankets and your cup of tea or coffee. And hopefully feeling just as warm as we are now. And we got some warthogs. Now, I wonder if this is the same one we've been seeing, but there's only one, one young with her. So I think there's one female with three young and one female with one young. And again, you need to always keep in the back of your mind, if you see quite a few warthogs, it's not necessarily a male and female. With warthogs, they live like the elephants, a matriarchal society. So the females rule in this one. And if they don't want a male around, they, they will push him away. And uh, if you see two adults with a lot of piglets, you, it's a better assumption that it, you think it's two females with with piglets rather than a male and female with the family. Bush pig are more like that. Bush pig, if you do get a chance to see them, um, they've got a lot more rounder back, silver down the, the back, red in colour, reddy brown colour, and you generally find them being nocturnal rather than diurnal like the warthog. And again, you can see on the little one, if, uh, if Patrick can get it in the, in the shot, um, the thick mane down the back of the warthog. And again, that gets erected uh, if they are scared. And uh, again, if you just think about your pet cat at home coming up against a dog, they put the fur on end and uh, make themselves look big. And that's basically what that hair on the warthog is to do. And you can see it putting the hair up and it just helps it to make it look bigger. And it's also thought, if you look by the, the mouth, there's those white whiskers. It's also thought that those white whiskers look like the tushes, uh, the, the large teeth, um, possibly because their, their teeth haven't grown yet, so they need these white whiskers to look like they've got the teeth. Quite possible. Um, the white whiskers on some warthogs I've seen decrease, but on others it, they've been the same. And... Yeah, it could well be. That's that's the reason for them. Hey, what's the mobile? And good morning. That's affirmative. Okay. Any updates? I think the Indlov were left on Weaver's Nest, Fambring West, into the Schlatin, uh, close to the junction with Chelapan Road, and the Nyari sounded like they found it south of Treehouse Dam. I wasn't able to follow up on that one. Okay, copy, thank you. Uh, is an IP of some in Lobo Treehouse Dam at the moment? Copy that. Uh, I think that must be the Schlambi from Weaver's Nest.
And again, Leopard will take on Warthog. Um, but especially if you get a very large Warthog, they can reach 60 kilos in weight for a very, very large male. So they're fairly evenly matched uh, against a Leopard, roughly around 60 kilos too. So they're going to be very, very careful when it comes to Warthog. But uh, it isn't impossible for them to take Warthog. And obviously a couple of days ago, uh, on Mark's first drive back from Leaf, they had the uh, the lions with a warthog in a burrow, and they were sleeping on top, and the warthog made a dash for it, and uh, the, uh, the two-year-old from the Sticks Pride uh, kind of decided actually it wasn't worth it, because the teeth on it was were, were quite large. Okay, looks like the uh, the warthogs have gone camera shy. So we'll see if we can carry on. And if you folks are wondering why, uh, sorry, how much? Four. So if you're wondering why Patrick is a little bit quiet this morning, uh, we don't have a microphone in the back just yet, so uh, he hasn't been quiet on purpose this morning. But uh, hopefully he's been doing well on the camera. He's been getting some nice shots from you. <laughs> Especially with the elephant coming close with his trunk and sniffing. So I actually thought at one stage you might try and sniff the camera, which would have been pretty funny. But, uh, it doesn't look like this leopard is... I was hoping we may just get in the last dying minutes of the, uh, the game drive that we might just get the leopard coming out. And no more updates from what I've heard about the lions so far. I know someone was trying to look for them earlier on, but I think that was further north from what I could, I could gather. I'm just going to try a little bit further along for you tell and just see if there is anything here in the last minute or so of the drive. See if there's any dwarf mongoose that we can play with. Rapidly becoming one of my favourite animals to do observe they're so so funny and especially being in this area and then getting to see the vehicles around the roads they're getting very very relaxed and they're actually playing out in the middle of the road and you can actually get to see them quite a lot and if you guys were watching yesterday morning and i was talking about the, the hornbill on the termite mound later on i actually saw a mongoose dive in the in a hole in that termite mound so it could well be the hornbills were waiting for those mongoose to wake up. Maybe getting a quick snack. I do have some very old leopard tracks here, but nothing fresh. Alrighty. Well, unfortunately, we are coming to the end. And as much as I was hoping we might get a leopard coming out, it looks like we're not going to be having lightning strikers twice today, so unfortunately. But maybe try again, we'll try again later on. As I say, Jared has got his leg of the Rangers race this afternoon. Um, obviously, we've had Mark and Patrick so far. Mark has set the bar to about 15, um, so he's doing extremely well. Uh, so we'll see how Jared does this afternoon. It's quite nice weather, you never know. We might get some more of the large animals coming out. And as I say, I'll definitely be telling him about the leopard in this area and see if we can catch up with it for you later on. So that's going to be at 3 o'clock. And uh, you'll be able to, to watch that and help him. And as I say, you guys have to email in uh, what the animal is. So it's up to you guys to help uh, get the ranger race numbers of the mammals up. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us for that. But thank you very much for joining me and thank you very much for all the questions this morning. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, the drive this morning. We've had some wonderful elephants. As I say, quite a, an awesome experience having them reaching out with the trunk and sniffing and, as I say, just uh, seeing who we are and what we're about. And uh, so absolutely fantastic to see that. I really enjoyed that one. But uh, I think we're going to be saying goodbye. So... Thank you very much, as I say, for joining me and Patrick, who's been on camera this morning. Thank you very much, Patrick, for all your 
your wonderful shots and uh, Kathy in Final Control sending through all your information and emails and if there's anything that I haven't been able to get to then I'll certainly be emailing you uh, back as well. So thanks again and we'll see you later. Goodbye.